Thanks to CuriosityStream for supporting PBS. I bet most of us can identify this monster. Pretty universal, right? It's the main attraction in the oldest running film franchise in the world. Battling robots and space monsters and King Kong, it's our most recognizable Japanese kaiju. With Godzilla's rise come a bunch more of these kaiju. Mothra, Biolante, King Ghidorah, Gigon, and Rodon. And we see these monsters on the big screen in film after film. But these giant creature stories have a strong literary and social history too. So let's talk about the two who get my vote for king and queen of the kaiju, Godzilla and Mothra. Why did these two emerge in Japan when they did? And what was their global attraction? I'm Dr. Emily Zarka, and this is Monstra. Movies made kaiju world famous. We can't even begin to talk about them without looking at the film that started the Dekaiju Iga or giant monster film genre, the 1954 black and white classic Gojira. The movie directed by Ishiro Honda shows the modern discovery of a 50 meters tall dinosaur with atomic breath just living its best life in the depths of the ocean at least until an atomic bomb test destroys its natural habitat, and the monster rises to terrorize Japan. Many people took Godzilla as an obvious metaphor for the continuing horrors of the nuclear attacks used against Japan by the U.S. during World War II. Honda saw firsthand the destruction of war serving as a soldier in China. The 1945 atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki loomed in the minds of the Japanese people. The film itself is a social commentary. So much so that a main character of the film asks outright, I mean, is it even a metaphor at this point? Godzilla is radioactive from the testing, and during its rampage, thousands of people die on the street, hit with Godzilla's radioactive breath. Entire neighborhoods are set aflame with a bright flash. Given the United States' role in World War II, it's not surprising to me that when the film was introduced in North America in 1956 as Godzilla, King of the Monsters, it had been heavily edited. 30 minutes of explicit references to the atomic bombings and nuclear testing were removed from the movie and replaced with two pretty terrible additions. The actor Raymond Burr, who was very awkwardly spliced into the American version, I can hardly believe what has just happened and famously bad English dubbing. Godzilla should not be destroyed. He should be studied. However, key scenes were kept that show the Japanese as both heroic individuals and sympathetic victims. Culturally, the best thing to come out of this westernized version of Gojira was the introduction of Godzilla and the Japanese kaiju to a global audience. The film's international success launched dozens of movie sequels, and we start to see the monsters appearing in manga, a distinct comic style unique to Japan. A manga comic featuring Godzilla was released the same year as the original film, reprinted and translated from the original 1985's The Return of Godzilla, the first English translated Godzilla manga wasn't released until 1988. In this comic, Godzilla is woken from slumber on the ocean floor by a massive volcanic eruption, not as a result of nuclear testing. Still, it must feed on radioactive substances, making submarines and nuclear power plants prime targets for its destruction. The negative portrayal of nuclear weapons remains. The series ends with an emotional message about humanity's willingness to destroy the natural balance of the world, and reminds the reader that some natural force may rise up to challenge the arrogance of mankind. Other comic versions of Godzilla aren't so serious, and some are even downright ridiculous. Godzilla Rage Across Time shows Godzilla killing the majority of the Greek gods until Zeus defeats him. One of the most recent literary versions of Godzilla was published as a prequel to the 2014 American film rebooting the franchise, hitting shelves less than two weeks before the movie's premiere. Godzilla Awakening explains that Godzilla is an ancient apex predator, lured to the surface by the radiation left after Hiroshima. This is only implied in the film itself. The 2014 Godzilla film marked the beginning of Legendary's Monsterverse, which obviously means more Godzilla. But we know from the trailers that more kaiju will return to the big screen. Most importantly, Mothra. Mothra! I love Mothra. 
Yes, really, I love Mothra. I would pick her over Godzilla, Mecha Godzilla, even Space Godzilla, although I do love those crystal shoulder pads. Mothra is beautiful. She's a brightly colored wing protectress who, understandably, is worshipped as a goddess. She shoots a laser out of her head. She's awesome. Unlike Godzilla, Mothra first appeared in literature in the 1961 serialized novel The Luminous Fairies and Mothra. The story follows a group of humans who discover Mothra on a South Pacific island where she is worshipped by fairies. Two of the fairies are stolen and Mothra goes to Japan to save them, which she obviously does because, again, Mothra is just that kind of amazing lady. Mothra's first standalone film hit theaters the same year. In the movie, Mothra hatches from an egg in the South Pacific and as a caterpillar, swims to the Japanese shore. This journey from her island of Japan parallels that of the real-world influx of goods produced in and inspired by the South Pacific. Bananas, mangoes, and Hawaiian print fabrics made popular by Elvis in Blue Hawaii were all popular commodities in Japan in the 1960s. The fact that both the flying kaiju and her tiny priestesses are female does also suggest some complicated representations of commodifying women. Nevertheless, I appreciate Mothra because she is one of the few female monsters who is not hideous, not typically sexualized, and has powers and strength to rival any of her male counterparts. So yeah, Mothra is queen. And I'm not the only one who feels this way. A 2017 poll of 10,000 Godzilla franchise fans by Japan's Asahi Television Network named Mothra their number one favorite Godzilla monster. She really is the queen of monsters. Even when the kaiju are adopted and adapted by non-Japanese cultures, there is still no denying that the monsters are influenced by their predecessors in Japanese cinema and literature. All kaiju demonstrate the tension between technology and nature. They suggest that although humanity seeks progress, innovation, and science, there are serious, potentially cataclysmic side effects. So I'll end with the words of Dr. Serizawa from the 2014 Godzilla movie, quote, the arrogance of man is thinking that nature is in their control, and not the other way around. Thank you to CuriosityStream for supporting PBS. CuriosityStream is a subscription streaming service that offers documentaries and nonfiction titles from a variety of filmmakers, including CuriosityStream Originals. If you like kaiju and want to learn more about the real history that influenced the Gojira story, you might be interested in Hiroshima Hidden Traces on CuriosityStream. You can learn more at curiositystream.com slash monstrum. Thanks for watching Monstrum. Do you have a favorite kaiju? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.